Hi guys, welcome to a introduction into creating circles in perspective, particularly looking at doing them in two-point perspective. And to start with, I'm just going to create a grid that will help you create circles freehand. So I'm going to use a ruler to help um, make these lines a bit stronger, a bit more um, <laughs> a bit straighter. So we start by making a cube and then breaking the cube up vertically and horizontally in their halfway points. And then I'm doing the same diagonally and it should all intersect in the center of that square. The next step is to put some guides in place for you to create this arc. So we're looking at each quadrant or each little square within this overall square and we're just focusing on the smaller parts of it and creating that nice curve from one node or one edge to another and having it curve nicely through that, um, through that diagonal line that we have through the overall square. So this, this circle is just there as a, a general way, a general guide to put in place to help you build circles freehand. So I'll now squish the square that I'm going to put it in. So I'm imagining the square is in a two-point perspective grid like I did earlier. And now I'm going to break this up in the same way where you create your diagonals and you then break it up vertically and horizontally in the halfway points of the object. And now what happens is when you create your arc within those quadrants, it changes the overall shape and it gets squished. So I'm still trying to match that same arc that I made in the, the circle on the left. But because the area that I have to work in has been constricted, it now squishes this circle so it's, it becomes an ellipse. We're going to look at putting those into the two-point perspective drawing that we did earlier and having these, these squares already be pushed into the and squashed into the two-point perspective planes. We're now going to use that same method of breaking up the squares into their horizontal and vertical and diagonal axes. So going from the base, the bottom cube that I made, I'm slowly working around the individual quadrants and just carefully trying to get the individual areas matching a nice ellipse overall. So it's the same process with every single square. You break it up in the halfway point horizontally and vertically, and then you do the same from one edge to another edge. And then working from the from one point to another and carefully arcing it around in one stroke without trying to get without getting too much feathering happening. The next step is connecting the base to the top. So I'm just connecting, I'm drawing lines from each anchor point that's corresponding from the bottom to the top and just draw a line up from there. And you'll notice that the, the edge on the diagonal line is the one that you will see, is the very edge of the object. I hope that makes sense in that the initial, the initial lines don't match the edge of the cubes so that the parameters of the the cylinder are actually within inside the cube because we've cut away quite a substantial amount of the material when we're using the, the cubes as a grid to map out our cylinders. And I'm doing the same. It's a bit easier to see on this top one, breaking it up into the horizontal, the vertical, and the diagonal, and then connecting the, the anchor points up to one another using quick but careful strokes. And then on those diagonal lines, drawing a vertical line connecting the top plane to the bottom. So it's just on those edges, those um, diagonal lines that we're, we're drawing the vertical line down from to show the, the boundary of that object. And it's a bit harder to do it on the, the, the 
cube that we're looking directly at because you have less room to to map that um, ellipse out. But if you just add a little bit of a curve to the top and the bottom and you remove that sort of really jagged edge on the cube, it will start to look like a, a pretty solid cube. But thank you. I hope you enjoyed. Bye.